other. Um, they didn't, and nobody wanted to celebrate truly until all of the kids obviously were out and safe. Course. And now they are. Uh. So, do we have? Uh, we're going to go. There's James Longman from ABC News right there in Thailand. James, what's the mood like right now after this great news? Oh, you can only imagine. I mean, what, as you say, a miracle. People here are absolutely jubilant. We are just a few hundred meters away from the cave entrance, and we heard this kind of scream go up from some of the rescuers which are, who are down there. This was just not meant to happen. This wasn't supposed to go this quickly. I don't know if you can see just behind me. They are the flashing lights. That is the police escort waiting for the last ambulance. We've seen 12 ambulances go by. That's 12 boys. The coach is still to come. We understand he's somewhere in that uh, cave area just outside. They've got a field hospital there. He's getting some of the medical help that he needs. We understand that he gave up his food rations, whatever he had inside, for those boys to make sure that they had what they needed for all that time inside. But this is just extraordinary because we got here just a few days after they went missing and a lot of people kind of thought, well, how are these kids ever going to have been found? I mean, they were missing for days and days, if people remember. And then on the day that they were found, it was just euphoric. People were really happy. But that was obviously tempered by the fact that people wondered, well, how the hell did they get these kids out? It's a 2.9-mile uh, tunnel, much of it underwater. If you think about, like, a water level like that, you have a tunnel that goes up and down inside the water and out of it. You've got rock climbing to do. This was just extraordinary. This country, I cannot tell you, it is jubilant tonight. It is, and so are we. This is just amazing. Wow. Um, I, you know, it's so funny. We were just saying, oh, yeah, go ahead. You can, you can applaud. I've never seen anything bring the Kenny, world. That's the coach. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're kidding. Right there? Oh, my gosh. There he is. Right here in this vehicle? Yes. That Ooh. should be the coach going by. Wow. Wow. We think we hope. Wow. Right? I've just never seen an event bring a world together like this where everybody is on the same team. You know what I mean? Look, I mean, I saw someone on Twitter say the whole world was supporting one soccer team. And I just love that idea, right? You know, they had people from all around the world here helping. They had British divers. They had divers from Scandinavia. They had divers from Belgium. They had rescue operatives from China. I mean, just everywhere coming together to try to get these boys out. It has been an absolute joy to watch. Thailand was not afraid of help, asking for help, and they got it in bounds. Uh, and we have just had a real joy in being here. People come up to me in the street, and they're like, Thank you, thank you. And I kind of have to say to them, I haven't done anything here. I'm just right, right, trying right. to report on a story. But do you know, James is brilliant. Do you know when the kids will get to see their parents? Look, well, they're on their way to the hospital now, the last remaining boys. We know that there is quite a lot of them already at the hospital. They're in quarantine at the moment because they don't know the kinds of diseases they may have picked up in that cave. So what we think is they're thinking about putting a glass partition up so that some of the parents can at least see their, par their boys. But it, it should be, they should be close to be able to hug them. I mean, that's, of course, what they've been wanting to do since this whole thing began. Yes. Well, I, I, I got chills when that ambulance yes. came by. And it seems like with this reunion with the parents coming, more chills, but good chills for everybody around the world. James, thanks so much for your Thank report. You, we appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. It's so great. It's that is so a feel-good story. I know. And you hear that coach. That coach continues to impress me. He is the most impressive person. He was able to keep those boys. Think about it. All boys, rambunctious ages, calm, cool, collected, gave up his food rations so that they have a better chance of survival, sacrificed everything. He really just, he is a feel-good story. It, this is a feel-good story, and we can all agree that James should be the next James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> if not James Bond, the next Bachelor. I mean, I mean how does he look so... I was staring I'm, at him. Too. I, uh, I'm distracted by his cheekbones. Yes. <laughs> his perfectly coiffed hair. I was like, this is such a meta thing because I felt like I was watching a TV show, but I was watching a TV show. Right. And I'm in the TV show that I'm watching. <laughs> as the host. And, yeah, as the host. It was all there. I, it was all, I was like, I could watch him on TV. And I am. And, and you are. Yeah. And the accent, I mean, it was all working for yes. you. Yes. So Which is odd because he's from New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs>
They're from the same hometown. Yeah. What happened? I don't know. Sliding he doors. went to a private school. <laughs> <laughs> that private prep once again yes, kicking in with the accent coaches. <laughs> um, so he's talking about one team uh, yes. and and.